All right, so we're heading into the final third map between uh, Ciara and Protoys. This time it is Norwood and it is again Orc versus Undead. And um, let's see, Ciara with work. an altar and Buru first, of course. And more importantly, Protoys starting with the exact same build that he used on uh, Turtle Rock with the altar crypt and the uh, cigarette with four Echolites. Mana at least, he said, referring to the Mana Fountain, which is certainly great use for the Undead. And on the side of uh, Ciara, I'm assuming this time it is way more likely that we're gonna see the uh, Blade Master here. Or is it he has? Okay, so it's gonna probably be a Blade Master with uh, some early items. I was just wondering because he already had five peasants in his gold line and usually you know, the Orc player would only have four when he starts building the um, barracks. So I was thinking for a second if he was going for a Farseer fast tech, but that's not going to be the case here. Blade Master and an early shop for Ciara. And Death Knight, of course, is the hero choice on the side of the Undead. And I'm curious what this game is going to end up, you know, looking like because. While Turt Rock is a somewhat big map, just by the size of it, it's still due to a lot of narrow chokes, narrow positions, and not all too much uh, freedom to move around. Doesn't lend itself really all too much to uh, hit and run strategies by the Orc. Whereas Norwood, an even bigger map, and a lot of open spaces is you know lending itself very well to potential hit and run strategies by the way Sierra just ended up losing his scout here to um, creeps not exactly what you want to end up doing uh, this could potentially on tier 2 end up uh, going into a hit and run kind of uh, game between the two players but we'll find out about that Blade Master with some items is heading out I'm assuming he's gonna go for the null brute here first to uh, hunt for some items. Whereas Protoss is just time taking the entire green camp here, taking down the No Warden first, which dies quite quickly thanks to its medium armor against all of the ghouls' uh, normal damage. Blade Master picks up a circlet and immediately continues heading down towards the next green camp where he's going to take down this No Brute for the next item, in case you don't know from the Blade Master's point of view, it's always going to be the Null on the left hand side. That uh, drops the item here on Nullwood. And he's exactly doing that, so hoping perhaps for a second circlet or a Claws Protector 6. But uh, Protoss is doing a good job. He is uh, creeping even more than his opponent and taking away two out of the four Goblin Merchants early on from Blade Master, who's using the speed scroll right now, as well as one uh, charge of uh, healing staff. And he's gonna come in here with the Windwalk, but he's going to be too late. The item is not going to either of the players just yet. No one was able to pick it up. The Blade Master does pick it up, but he's dying to a call here way too greedy by Ciara, trying to go there for the item and losing his first hero. I mean, fortunately for him, it was only a level one hero and he's going to be very well equipped by the time uh, it comes back out, but uh, I mean, the experience advantage that he's allowing his opponent to get in return is definitely enough to uh, compensate the undead player for the, uh, you know, decently equipped Blade Master that he's facing here, especially since it was only a Gloves of Haze, so not, you know, only the third best of the four items. And yeah, the Death Knight is already going to get level 3 in return for that. And of course, he's able to just throw these coils like there's no tomorrow here, given that he's standing right next to the uh, Mana Fountain. Yeah, he's level 3. The Grunts continue creeping, getting this, clo uh, this Blade Master closer to level uh, 2 at least. But the Death Knight is right there. And uh, is he going to go for the Null? Yes, he is. Uh, getting surrounded here perhaps at the merchant but he spot the staff of teleportation already and using that one immediately a bit unlucky for him that he got surrounded there well I wouldn't call it unlucky because it was not 
too far of a stretch to, um, you know, imagine Ciara surrounding his opponent there. And I just mean by that with the mana he had available to himself, he would have probably been able to, or maybe been able to even kill another grunt there on top of things. The one that was down to like a little bit over half his HP. DK continues sitting at the fountain. Ghouls are being pulled. It looks like... Uh, looks like he perhaps anticipated the orc creeping here and trying to go for a creep check. But the orc is actually creeping. The spawn position on the top where the ghouls are now going to come in. The DK scouting even further. He said the orc is not creeping here either. And now the both players will collide. The ghouls do see the grunts and the blade master creeping up here. But uh, the DK is not quite there yet. But it looks like Ciara doesn't realize that. I mean this grunt is in trouble nevertheless he needs one hit with the dk and a coil and that's exactly what he's ending up throwing at this grunt killing that one and is he gonna get a surround on top of things at this grunt he's trying it and he's getting this around so proto is really improving his game here getting two grunts killed and building on his huge xp lead shadow hunter second is out on the side of ciara a beast tree only one beast tree coming this time so we're not gonna see uh, Wind Riders on uh, Norwood, at least not initially. Blade Master gets another coil here. Psst. And uh, yeah, he is forced to run away already. And in this particular case, it might not even be too horrible of an idea to cancel those uh, to cancel those salves with coils, as there's the mana fountain, and the DK will just be able to regenerate mana there all the time for free, whereas heal salves do cost 33 gold every time and um, you know it takes away a lot of momentum from the org army if um, the blade master is forced to heal all the time so the rock golem is going to go to uh, Ciara there's nothing that Protoss can do about that just due to hex and the fact that this uh, rock golem cannot be stolen by coil so uh, Protoss is playing this smartly leaving the org B for the time being and uh, just regenerating some more mana again. Lich is out with an orb. He's moving across the map all by himself. He's got the um, staff though at least. Second staff already. Ah, never mind. I was still on the wrong hero. So no staff for that Lich. So really risky here by him. But apparently he realized that. Retreating here. Getting the quick sacrificial pit again. As well as the slaughterhouse. As well as the very quick tier 3 here. Orb is going to be available in just a second already. Work complete. DK continues trying to harass, but uh, at the moment, Ciara seems to be doing quite a good job just avoiding the DK's harassment, just not being seen here. Sees now that the uh, creeps at the bottom of the fountain, at the ground, have already been taken down. I mean, there's no telling, of course, usually, as they don't drop items, which on the Blade Master would tell him that those creeps have already been taken down. And the Blade Master with another uh, Slippers of Agility here continued, you know, to be boosted. And uh, now really becomes a uh, force to be reckoned with. And the SH continues creeping in the meantime as well. So uh, Ciara is really making the best out of the situation that he put himself into after this early game. Catching up XP-wise with the Blade Master. Increasing or getting a bit of an XP lead on his second hero compared to the second hero of the Undead. Which is just... Standard and Protoss again has added a fiend here. It's like he could maybe just call Nova this dragon a couple times and then uh, grab the item. Web is coming right now, so he is pretty much blindly anticipating Wind Riders here. Second Beast Tree is now being added, but I guess given the way this game has gone thus far, it doesn't look like Protoss is gonna stand, um, Ciara, excuse me, is gonna stand too big a chance in the straight up fight once everything is ready for Protoss perhaps a third hero yeah, which is going to be the Dreadlord again and Destroyers and everything once everything is ready for Protoss I don't think given the way this early game went that Ciara is going to have all too much a chance in a straight up fight so I guess it's likely that we're going to see him going into hit and run. I mean, he's tacked up to tier 3 already. He's getting the reinforced defenses upgrade. So I guess eventually he's going to start, or at least he's going to want to start building a couple of towers like here and then get the tiny great hall and just hit the undead base with raiders. 
Lich level 2. DK sold some stuff. A shade is already with the DK. Not with the rest of the army though. Speaking of the undead base, the Dreadle is out, picked up the orb. Everything else is looking quite normal. Shadowhunter continues creeping here to make sure not to lose the Raider, but he's using a heal wave. Which he can also afford to, you know, he can just stroll to the fountain at any point as well. Unless the undead is sitting there already. Dreadlord is now heading across the map. Protoss continues creeping. Death Knight level 4 already. With uh, level 1 unholy aura. Did he skill already? Yes. So he does have Death Pact skill. Just in case of hero focus. Which certainly is going to be an option for this Blade Master here. And yeah, the peons are heading down here. I imagine we're going to see a couple of towers. And a tiny great hole eventually. <laughs> Second invo potion found already here uh, by the shadow hunter. While he crept, or is he even gonna? Yeah, he's building towers. And where's the blade master? There he is, probably with the tiny great hole right now. So yeah, there is the expansion. And in the meantime, the orc army for the first time is making its way towards the undead main base. So the hit and run is going to begin here in just a second. TP is available on the DK. There is sleep available though. And soon level 2 Nova on top of things. So there are some means on the side of the undead to punish hit and runs by his opponent. And the shade is there already and sees exactly what's happening. Preventing the Blade Master from putting down the tiny Great Hall. And the Town Pod is coming in. Speed Scroll is not being used in time here. And he's, even, he's gotta use the Town Pod here. Is a Coil Nova coming in? Yes. Against the uh, Ghoul, uh, against the Grunt though, not against the Raider, a little bit surprisingly. As the Grunts, I mean, they do have Pillage, but they do not have uh, Siege damage. So usually they're, and they're less mobile. So they tend to be a bit of a weak link in those hit and run kind of situations. So I think killing a Raider would have been more valuable. Uh, Ciara adding two towers inside of his base, just wants to make sure not to, you know, fall victim to a quick push by his opponent just to stop this uh, base trade nonsense from happening all of the time. But, well, with the two towers, I think that's less likely to be working, especially with the reinforced defenses being uh, finished already. Two peons are found here by those ghouls. The Death Knight did pick up a new town portal, and we're gonna see the next round of hit and run with those raiders. The blade master in the meantime still didn't pick up an orb. But uh, given that he's probably not going to fight straight up all too soon. I guess that's not the most important of investments. And let's see if Ciara is going to lose his expansion here. Before Protoys decides to town portal home. The orc is going straight for the black citadel though. Three towers already uh, available. Level 3 on the shadow hunter though as well. So he does have some powerful healing against the uh, damage output of those towers and is Protoss actually going to let his town hall fall he's doing damage to the ghouls uh, to the peons with the ghouls he's doing some damage to the towers and now he has to tp but is it going to be too late to save the black citadel tp is coming in from his opponent and two of the raiders are in some trouble falling well actually this one did fall i expected this one to be more trouble but two raiders fallen here in total and tp is exchanged on top of things a bunch of towers have fallen here, a bunch of peons have fallen here, and two ghouls have fallen. But the expansion is still up, and this is going to become a yeah, bit expensive for the undead in the long run, if he has to continue doing this. But as long... Ah, okay, he's stepping forward onto the shade, which uh, does become visible, apparently, as long as uh, unit is stepping on top of it. Interesting. And uh, what is the response here? Is it, uh, yeah, it's a full TP. Two raiders are available as well as the Shadow Hunter. And is Ciara going to get the surround here? Not with the first ensnare, getting a second ensnare thrown onto that DK, and he actually does screw up the surround. And this means this DK will probably be able to escape here eventually. And even were okay, now two more raiders are coming in, so now he has to get the surround. Yeah, now he gets it very safely. Move potion used by this DK. And the rest of the army is streaming in slowly from the top of the, or from the middle of the map. He is taking more damage and he does have death pack, keep that in mind. The ghouls are now coming in, the first one is immediately being sacrificed and there's no way in hell that this raider is going to stay alive and speech code is being used out by Ciara. And the worst thing of all here is that now his raiders are completely out of position. There's no way in hell that he can head across the entire map 
to uh, do another base trade and force another town port before his expansion gets taken down. So now he's forced to defend with only raiders and, you know, two heroes and two grunts. But raiders, which are like the worst possible straight up fighting unit just in terms of tanking and, uh, you know, dealing damage to anything else but buildings and perhaps casters. And yeah, while the first of the statues has fallen, three raiders are already down here. And the Shadow Hunter is not getting surrounded here on top of things. The Blade Master is actually the target. And who is going to fall first here? He's scroll used by the undead. And both of the orc uh, heroes are in trouble. And uh, well, so far neither of them has died. But another surround is fitting here by Pro Toys. The Death Knight is the next target. The Blade Master gets killed though by the coil. And the Shadow Hunter is yeah, going to be taken down next. He's getting out for the time being but uh, yeah only for a moment this DK still has mana for another death pack and he should be able to use that onto one of the ghouls to definitely ensure his survival but he's not even forced to do so as there is just no damage output available anymore on the side of Ciara. Coil takes down the next raider and um, well 31 supply against 49 no heroes against three heroes well, an expansion against no expansion, but this expansion definitely has an expiration date. And that one yeah, is going to be pretty soon. Death Knight level 5 as well. Shadow Hunter has been rebought at the tavern, but what is a lone Shadow Hunter together with three units going to do? Last tower, or well, the last finished tower has been taken down. This one is going to be cancelled. And there's just nothing to do at this point for Ciara. And he calls it quits Pro Toys is going to the finals, winning this best of three. Ciara did, after a terrible early game, get himself into a position where, you know, he was at least able to take this into a hit, of, hit and run kind of game. And uh, the big mistake was when he TP'd to his expansion in order to uh, get the Death Knight killed, who went, you know, forward who did not get surrounded initially. It took Proto it took Ciara way too long to finish or to seal the surround onto this DK. And that allowed the DK to at first use his inmo potion and then get all of his other units into position to fight the uh, very raider heavy army, which is a terrible fighting army in this uh, circumstance. And uh you know, that just put Protoys right in front of Ciara's expansion with a way superior army, with Ciara completely out of position, unable to continue uh, doing his hit and run, and therefore due to, a, you know, due to some messed up micro by Ciara, which kind of turned out to lead him into a huge strategical mistake, not being able to continue hit and running in you know, a strategy that was solely based on doing hit and run. He ends up, um, you know, forced to forfeit this uh, third map to Protoys. So we do have another finalist here, which puts us back to eight finalists. Protoys is going to replace, um, is going to replace Satini. We're going to have another little rundown of the uh, finalists so far uh, in the next recap video, as well as a preview to um, the next uh, stage of this tournament, which is going to leave Europe and show the uh, Extreme Masters Los Angeles tournament, where there are going to be two, two more participants um, decided, determined for the uh, finals eventually. But as I said, that's going to be in the next recap video. For now, this is it. Protoys, with the first best of three victory against Ciara, is able to move on into the finals. And uh, yeah, I'll see you next for the recap video. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you give it a thumbs up and uh, I'll see you soon.